again. This is Pastor Ralph Michael Rivera, and uh, we're here today to uh, to reflect on uh, what it means to totally surrender. I welcome you to this week's uh, devotional, and I uh, encourage you to bring a pencil and a paper, and uh, write down the Bible verses, and in your own time, uh, explore them. In terms of a total surrender, the idea of giving total control of our lives over to anyone, well, it goes contrary to the mentality of this culture, of our society. See, we don't want anyone to tell us what to do. We want to be in total control of everything, every choice, every decision, everything that, that we do. See, in this society, the word surrender is usually looked upon as something negative, meaning that uh, we lost something or we're giving up, we're surrendering. But during today's reflection, I just want to, for us to take a look at what does it mean to surrender to God? You see, when we surrender to God, we are choosing to give up the fight between our selfish, sinful man and God. We surrender our will to his. And this helps us to have a relationship with him. How many of you are involved in a relationship with him? If you are, amen. If you're somewhat, amen. Let's, let's, get, let's, let's work on it. Let's, let's cultivate that relationship. You see, brothers and sisters, every time we surrender more of ourselves to him, we are able to become more filled with guided by the Holy Spirit. And the reason we have to make this choice to surrender to God, the Bible says, is because of the original surrender of this world to the devil at the fall of mankind. Genesis 3, 17, 19. See, this made Satan the God of this world for a time. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. And caused all people to be born under the power of sin because of Adam's sin. Romans 5, 12. This means that until Jesus returns and takes his rightful place as the final authority and ruler over all, well, we have to make the decision over and over to surrender our minds, wills, and actions to him. Romans 8, 20, 22. Romans 12, 1 and 2. What does this mean? Well, it means our first stage of surrender is to surrender our lives to God when we are saved. See, the Holy Spirit draws us to Christ and as we make the choice to surrender ourselves to him and receive his free gift of salvation, glory to God, we choose to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And we become God's children. John 1, 12 and 2 Corinthians 5, 21. We become what is called new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And as we continue to grow in our walk with the Lord, it becomes more natural and more necessary to surrender more of our lives to him on a daily basis. Why? Well, that's a good question. And you know I always like when you ask me good questions. Well, so that we may get to know him more closely <laughs> and serve him more effectively. That's the why. See, this continuation of our surrender enables us to be filled more and more with the Holy Spirit, showcasing His characteristics and the fruit of the Spirit with our lives and through our lives. Ephesians 5.18, Galatians 5.22-23. Hmm. See, when we seek God, we find Him. Jeremiah 29.13 and Matthew 7, verses 7-11 through 11 tells us that. Brothers and sisters, this leads us to multiple points of decisions throughout the course of our lives. And each decision we make comes down to, should I or should I not surrender? So here's the question. Will we surrender to God and his will for our lives? Or will we live our lives for ourselves without submitting to him? Brothers and sisters, 
The battle to surrender our will to God is a difficult and ongoing one. Make no mistake about it. But it is for our good. It's for your good and my good. See, the choice to engage in the battle is ours. In Joshua 24, 15. See, God calls us to live lives that are surrendered to him so that we may be instruments of his righteousness. Are you an instrument of his righteousness? You see, this happens when we deny our fleshly desires for the greater cause of Christ. Mark 8, 34. And in terms of his instruments of righteousness, Romans 6, 13. See, when we surrender our minds and our wills and our actions to Christ, brothers and sisters, we exchange our life for his, his. We exclaim, I have been crucified with Christ. See, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. <laughs> Can you say that? See, in the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Can we say that? Hmm. Jesus surrendered his life for ours, brothers and sisters, so we surrender our lives for him. And in doing this, we grow closer to him, help others come to him, and, well, we reap a heavenly reward. That's in Luke 6, chapter 6, verse 22 and 23, brothers and sisters. See, friend, true surrender, listen up, true surrender means you willingly offer yourself to become an instrument in the hands of God. And you dedicate your life to his cause. Are we dedicated? Brothers and sisters, the biblical concept of submission is to place oneself under the authority of another. So when we surrender to God, we give our lives to his authority and to his control. We give our lives to his authority and his control. So in what ways, I guess the question is, can we submit ourselves to God? Well, one way to submit to God is through salvation. We begin submission to God by believing in Jesus as God's son who rose from the dead. To give us eternal life, Romans 10, 9 states, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The second way to submit to God is through obedience. The first step of obedience of the teachings of Jesus' is baptism. Matthew 28, 19, 20. When a person believes in Jesus' baptism is to expect the next step of obedience. In addition to baptism, the Bible clearly teaches other ways to obey God. Just as a child seeks to obey his or her parents to show love and respect, we are called to submit to God through loving obedience to his commands. And the third way to submit to God, brothers and sisters, is to learn more about him. Psalms 1 offers an example of the godly person whose life is submitted to God. It says, come with me, it reads, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. So those who love God submit to him through a life that seeks to better know him each and every day. The fourth way to submit to God is how we treat one another. In Matthew 25, 40, Jesus even taught that how we treat the least of these is how we treat him. Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Be kind to one another. The fifth way to submit to God is how we share him with others. For example, when the woman at the well was changed by Jesus, he said, she immediately left her water jar, ran to the village, and told others to come to see the man who told me all the things I ever did. Can this be the Christ? Brothers and sisters, all areas of our lives are to be submitted to God and placed under his authority. When we come to Jesus for salvation, obey him, learn about him, treat others with love and share Christ with others, we are showing our submission to the Lord through our actions in ways that honor God and change the lives of others. We are living our lives totally surrendered. 
and want to learn more about living a life totally surrendered, I encourage you to look for the video sermon entitled Total Surrender on our website. Come and join us and hear what the Lord has to say. Will you surrender? This is Pastor Ralph Michael Ravella, and once again, I encourage you to go forth and live your life according to the Word of God. Until next time, see you soon.